This is video four of the nutrition and metabolism chapter. Uh, okay, so we've just beaten, we've just climbed that hill of uh, ATP synthesis and all of the little foothills that lead up to it. Let's kind of change subjects here and talk about uh, other reactions that occur with these nutrition these nutrient molecules. So let's start with glucose. Uh, you can kind of look at this picture down here, and it's got. Don't try to memorize it, okay? But you can kind of see how they're all connected. There's glucose, right? So I can actually take some of these molecules that are involved in glycolysis and convert them to other molecules. I can actually make fats out of them. I can make brand new glucose. I can uh, turn glucose into other molecules. And here are some examples. So uh, you may have heard these terms before. I think we have uh, glycogenesis. So this is glycogen genesis. This is making glycogen from glucose. Uh, glycogenolysis, so there's that lysis ending, so that's the breakdown of glycogen. Uh, glycogenesis takes uh, glucose, makes it into glycogen. Glycogenolysis takes glycogen and turns it into glucose under these conditions. And then here's one, this one kind of is the most catchy, gluconeogenesis, that's sugar new making. So you can make sugars from non-sugar, and you do actually. So if you go on a uh, no sugar diet or something, you're actually gonna make carbohydrates in your body. Uh, you can't prevent it, but it's not a bad idea to reduce like, you know, total amount of sugar. All right, anyway, lipid metabolism. Again, see some common suffixes here, lipogenesis, so that's lipid making, lipolysis, lipid breaking. Uh, where, how can we make, lipogenesis. Well, we got to take raw materials that aren't fats. And if I'm going to take fats over here and break them down, I can turn them into sugars, right? So lipogenesis builds fats, lipolysis breaks them down. Uh, here we see some uh, side, side products. You can take cholesterol, turn into steroids. You can uh, take amino acids from your protein and enter them into the um, uh, ATP synthesis thing. You can basically synthesize proteins from non-proteins as well as long as you have, as long as you can make or um, eat the, the correct amino acids. Second and final slide of this video, so it's gonna be a shorter one. Protein metabolism. Uh, anything interesting here? Um, no, 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 no. Ah, here's an interesting thing. So you're constantly making new ones and breaking them down, okay? They don't last forever. Protein, like muscle fibers that I made in my arm when I was five are not still there. They've been replaced many, many times over the years with new proteins, right? Because they are not uh, immortal. And if I eat too many proteins, let's say that I decide to start working out and I buy some protein powder and I eat 100 grams of protein in a day, right? I'm gonna, it's gonna be, I'm gonna be very hard put to actually utilize 100 grams of protein. It's way over the top. Uh, if I don't use all of those proteins that I've consumed, I don't just keep them around, all right? I'm going to do something with them. And they're not going to be stored as protein. They're going to be stored as fat. I can turn them into sugar, use them as uh, for ATP synthesis. And if they're still around at the end of the day, well, they're going to go somewhere. And that's generally into fat. So you can, you can eat nothing but protein. And I wouldn't suggest this. But if you ate 100% protein, but you had 4,000 calories a day of it, you're gonna make a lot of fat from protein. It's the way it is. Um, okay, there's a kind of a catabolic anabolic equilibrium. You're gonna do uh, equal amounts breaking them down and building up these molecules. And then lastly are these two states right here. So an absorptive state describes your, nutri your nutritional state after you've eaten uh, while the food's still being processed. So you're, you're, you've broken down this food in your gut and you're absorbing it and your liver is doing something with it and your muscles are doing something with it and your fat cells are doing something with it. Well, what are they doing? Well, they're building stuff. You, put, you incorporate all these nutrients, you're going to start turning them into something. So you can turn them into, you know, whatever, uh, hormones. You can turn them into uh, messenger proteins. You can turn them into parts of a cell, whatever. But uh, generally speaking, you're going to be doing some anabolic reactions after that as they kind of dominate. 
uh, some things that are stimulated when you are in an absorptive state. Uh, glycogenesis, and think about this, is turning gly glucose into glycogen. Lipogenesis, making fat. Protein synthesis, making protein. So you're building molecules. Post-absorptive state, let's say I go five, six hours, whatever, 10 hours, all night without eating. Uh, I'm going to wake up in a post-absorptive state. I will be, I still need sugar, I still need to make ATP, but I don't have any in my gut, so where do I get it? Well, this is where you go back to this kind of drawing over here. Going back to the previous slide, hopefully. Trust me, I'm clicking it, there it is. So, post-absorptive state, I don't have any sugar in my gut, but I still need sugar to go through the uh, ATP synthesis stage, so what I do? Oh, I start breaking down proteins. I'm sorry, fats first, okay? Glycogen first, then fats. Ultimately, proteins, you don't really want to do that. And here are some reactions which are encouraged uh, in a post-absorptive post state. Glycogenolysis, uh, gluconeogenesis, making new sugar, right? If I'm running low on gas, I need to make some more. Uh, lipolysis, breakdown fat, protein breakdown. This is stimulated, or at least the first three are stimulated by glucagon. So insulin is kind of a dominant hormone in the absorptive state. Glucagon is a dominant hormone in the post-absorptive state. Another process that will occur in the post-absorptive post environment, if it goes on long enough, is something called glucose sparing. So you will avoid using glucose. You'll actually, uh, if you're getting low enough on gas, you're going to stop using glucose in most of these reactions. You're gonna actually start uh, breaking down fat rather uh, significantly. And the reason is, is that your muscles and your or you know abdominal organs uh, can all run pretty good uh, at kind of a low idle using these big complicated molecules to make ATP. Your brain doesn't work that well like that. So you spare the, save the glucose because you're going to use that for your brain. Your brain gets real groggy when it doesn't have sugar. Okay, that's, uh, that's video four.